The Inspiring Story of Emmanuel B. Sam MacDonald Sam MacDonald became the first black man to supervise an athletic program at a major university, Stanford. As a young child, he developed horse training skills on his parents' Gilroy farm. They were the first black family there. At 16, Sam moved to San Francisco on his family move to Seattle in 1900. He never saw them again. He trained horses, did some boxing, and worked on ships, but soon grew tired of the hustle in the big city. On a fateful trip via horse carriage back towards Gilroy, he met a man who told him about Palo Alto Stock Farm. The next day, he walked 18 miles and arrived in the town of Mayfield with only a change of clothes and two blankets. He became a teamster and drove horses up Portola Road. Soon he knew just about everyone from Mayfield to Menlo. Sam landed a job as groundskeeper at Stanford University in 1903 and worked with horses at the famous stock farm. In 1904, he was appointed deputy marshal of Mayfield, becoming one of the earliest black lawmen in California. He then took a correspondent course in law and served as a Secret Service agent for the Treasury Department as deputy constable for the new Palo Alto Township and as deputy sheriff for Santa Clara County. He owned property at the corner of California Avenue and El Camino Real and soon became heavily involved in local politics. After the 1906 Great Earthquake, he was put in charge of the massive cleanup at Stanford University. In 1907, Sam became the superintendent of Stanford's athletic property and sports facilities. By the 1930s, he was a nationally known and highly respected authority on engineering running tracks and sports fields. His signature crisscross pattern mode into lawns is well known to most football fans. Sam started a garden, growing food for Stanford Home for Condolescent Children, and organized an annual barbecue with all the proceeds going to help support the children. He owned for 150 acres of land in La Honda along Alpine Creek and could have made a fortune by opening it to logging. He maintained it as a wildlife refuge and then willed it to Stanford. It is now a public nature preserve. MacDonald is remembered as a smart businessman who lived a modest life. He died a bachelor in 1957, age 73.